the California budget. This free event will take place at 55 Eckley Lane, Walnut Creek. For details, call 925-934-3135. On Tuesday, March 22nd at 7 p.m., the Berkeley Fellowship of Unitarian Universalists will screen the film COINTELPRO 101 with guest presenter Claude Marx, Executive Director of Freedom Archives. The film will be shown at the Fellowship Hall, 1924 Cedar Street, Berkeley. Suggested donation of $5 to $10. No one will be turned away. For details, call 510-841-4824. On Friday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m., Destiny Arts Center will present the world premiere of Free, Voices from Beyond the Curbside, a movement theater work created by the young artists of the Destiny Arts Youth Performance Company. This performance will take place at Laney College Theater, 900 Fallon Street, Oakland. Tickets are $13 to $25 for adults, $6 for youth 18 and under. For details, call 510-597-1619. The community calendar is produced by members of the KPFA Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least three weeks in advance to KPFA, Fox 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Fax them to 510-848-3812 or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. This calendar is also online at kpfa.org. And you are tuned to 94.1 FM KPFA in Berkeley, 89.3 FM KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 FM KFCF in Fresno and online kpfa.org. Just past midnight, it's time for Over the Edge. Smart bombs and napalms and U.S. Army whores. Come along, come along. Hey, baby, don't be late. Come along, come along. Let's celebrate Watergate. Come along, come along. Poor Nixon's in his home. Come along, come along. Sitting under teapot dome. Come along, come along. Forget their heroin, smoke some grass and relax and forget your bloody wine. You're tuned to All Art Radio. No news, no weather, no sports, no records you've ever heard before. It's All Art, all the time. Although millions of
welcome to All Art Radio right here on Over the Edge, APFA in Berkeley. And uh, we continue with All Art Radio. Oh, 
da 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 da
the radio station's first delay on the phone feed. I just thought I would briefly enter the mix to see what my iPhone had with the sound like. How did it work? Seiner Sonate mit Urlauten. server. Stop the It's not even on the block.
Americans And let's be number two Number one was a pissy-ass act We all went through Come along Save the whales and save the humans too And the ladies and the fairies And the communists, true blue Come along out of the Cold War The planet is still here We got to save our mama Nothing more we have to fear Come along and let the people And the other species rare Breathe again in the vasty space The cleaned up U.S. air Come along without your fission And if you fusion choose First make sure you don't burn up The very ground you use Come along without your pistol Without your policeman's badge Secret infiltrators shooting up themselves in colored rage Come along without your police state Come along without your power Come along just as you are Really make it for an hour You have all your life to wear your clothes Maybe years to milk your cow Come along and breathe together And conspire to be here now Come along, come along The hour is at hand When all this mighty nation That smokes across the land Can wake up again And shake off our Indochina stream And here 800,000 orphan babies They all dream Come along, oh mighty nation And get down on your knees And ask the gods and bodhisattvas To forgive us if they please We have... Killed two million people, we have wounded millions more, and 15 million refugees are waiting at our door. So come along, humble, and act to please mankind. Cut down on our electric, whose dim light has made us blind to the stars and all the birdies, and the coyotes and the babes. We have seen without the seeing, buried under brimstone waves. Come along, come along, the war is over now, Indochina's independent and we are friends with Mao, the war is over, yeah, the war is over here, and now begins the battle to make our souls more dear, come along, come along, and empty out your mind of all the American garbage we cast out in the wine, all the law and order chatter. But the gangsters sold us fools All the military clatter And their costly useless tools We need more farms and farmers We need to work the land We need to get down on our knees And seed with our own hands The earth we stand on top of The earth we have bombed out Come along, come along And this is Simon, holy shout, yeah Come along in Tallahassee, come along in Idaho, kick the military cops out, let all secret agents go to the unemployment office down here with us below. Instincts, 
passionate. I'm not very passionate. Oh, you don't oh. think you're very passionate? I do have my mind. She's passionate, but I have nothing. She's very logical at the same time, and she's not over, overwhelmed by. No. By what you would call passion, you know? I think. I think. I think you're much more passionate. Well, I know that I'm. I work very much without discipline, without instinct. Although I'm the one that's up every single morning at the same exact time making coffee at the same exact time, but. Edison Gasaway is just gas by the whole business. Gasaway operates Andy's Hot Cock uh, K House in Long Beach. <laughs> Should I be using the silver? Well, I use both, actually. You know, you can do either one. Okay, thanks. Oh, it'd be nice to have someone hand me my brushes and paints all the time. I think the ultimate rebellion now would go back to someone like John Cage is just to be silent. To In fact, I... Shut up. Not I like to express oneself. That it's the only way you can shock people, especially this younger generation, is by not exposing yourself, not self-broadcasting. But I don't think it's a very interesting statement. That's my perfect Thank life here, just to hang around. Wait, I'm just going down to the palette and picking up the same thing. Hanging the white. Whoop. Much and I trust my instinct very much. I see that we work very differently. Isabel loves logic. She loves things that will last forever. I really don't care if I make something and it blows away in a half hour. I'm that original caveman still drawing on the wall what what he sees and trying to express it and what he's feeling and trying to express it. One looks at one straight on as you address a painting. That's as, it's as basic as that. I am just I'm a storyteller. Are you interested? Well, you look at them from the side too. I don't think it matters where you look at them, but I mean they do have a fairly distinct uh, frontal point of view. I, I I'm very good at again receiving messages from from life, from people, from people's faces, from from a place. From and uh, undress from, uh, from that point. From, from the earth that we live in, from the view, you, they look like pictures. The sky and expressing that and, and trying to have a dialogue with the rest of the world. And, and uh, for example, you're not looking at them in the same way that you might look at sculpture. Although, I think that most people look at sculpture in a pictorial way anyway. I mean, everyone picks a view, or whatever the view might be, the criteria that you use uh, are really pictorial rather than sculptural. I mean, I don't think that uh, there is a unique sculptural way of looking. There, there are sculptural descriptions. You might say that you're interested in the tactile quality of, uh, of the material or something like that, but the way you judge a sculpture from each individual point of view, even though you might and make a route and take, a, you know, use a 360 degree point of view. It's made up of individual point of views. And each stationary point of view that you select, uh, I think that you have a tendency to look at the sculpture in a, in a very pictorial way. a lot of the conviction that Rothko shared with his fellow abstract expressionists at that time, which is that they were inventing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Flanagan. And today you'll stick with me and we'll find out how to achieve the kind of thing on canvas that the truly insane seem to come up with with little or no effort or thought. There's a color there. I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter what color it is. Haven't you admired those loony eyes on the tramps? Or, or the strange figures in the art of the insane that you find selling for high prices in art centers in the big cities? Therefore, I think the imagery that they chose was oftentimes connected to birth. Well, none of that is as hard as it seems. You know what I mean? He's I not, see what I do on the very simple. He's not too busy with trying to figure out in what media to use or I couldn't care less. Couldn't care less if it's water watercolor, oil, charcoal, everything. Okay, I use them all. Or fertility. So today, I'd like you to go along with me today. Try this, take some of that paint. Let's try another tube here. There we go. There. A big blob of it, I think that's called green maybe. as it seems to achieve truly insane effects on canvas. Without growing through that rigorous training that the insane must go through. institutions in which they're kept. They're all great, but whatever's at hand at the moment is is what what I go for. I don't let I don't let the medium or the technique get in the way of that that urge, that spirit to make, you know, to draw, to express. Or your generation. Now I'm gonna show you today how to do it. You'll be standing on your head. Don't try that. It would be insane. So, and, and, and I work in fashion because, again, I married fashion so early on, and I was trained by the best to, to, to learn about that and to, to I'm around such a, so much style that it's second nature to me, you know? So. The Filthy Rich Foundation brings you all art radio. Let's take out our canvas. One of my favorite techniques is to pee all over a fresh canvas before you paint on it. Do do 
because it's TV. I'm not going to do it on TV. The sense of sort of balance, the kind of aesthetic and visual take that you have on a piece of sculpture. Oh, but when I'm doing a, a drawing for Nordstrom, that, or when I'm drawing for The New Yorker, or cartooning, or whatever, somebody's portrait, to me it's all the same. It's, it's about communication. Giving you a call here. Is the board operator available? Uh, is there someone there? Yes, uh, the board operator is available. Just a moment, I'll go get him. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good. Hello, I'm the board operator. Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening. Yep. What do you yes. want? Arthur Bell. Well, Young man, I'm calling because, as you know, I am a late night radio professional. Yes. Some people might call me a sensation. Yes. I've listened to you and, for, uh, for many years, although you haven't been on lately. Yes, no, sir. I've been very busy in Manila, Philippines, with my beautiful wife, as you know, raising my wonderful daughter, Asia. What, what, so, what, what has this all got to do with all our radio? Well, sir, if you're going to have art radio, you need to have art bell. And two, oh. I thought I would call and, and give you some advice, radio advice. I man, get you. I get you. You're, well, you're, you're, have, you're yes, a you have a radio voice, you, you, you could go far. But one thing is, I don't know what they're teaching you in public radio, but you need to learn to play one thing at a time, sir. You seem to have several things going at once. Several uh, That's no fun. But, sir, people, how do they know if it's a talk show or a music program? It's both. Both. You decide. What do you want to talk about? Well, sir, I think world events are quickening, as you know. All I'm right. Let's, let's, let's talk about world events on this talk segment. Well, first, I'd like to express my dismay. How about that Japan? Terrible talk. Good Lord. Listen, I want to say I want to say something. If you would just uh, close up for a minute, I want to say something important here about Japan and the news and the news coverage we've been getting about it. Ever since it began, I've hardly been able to understand technically, technologically, scientifically what's going on in these reactors exactly. And it seems to me that no story has been more poorly explained to the public than this Japan, this whole Japan blow-up thing. It just, they just do a terrible job. They don't explain it well, and I don't like it. I don't know what's happening. I, I have to agree with you, sir. I have a feeling that we're not being told the entire story. Well, Things more than terrible. that. More than that. That's just like the, um, oh, never mind. I, 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 more yep. than that, yep. it's, it's a matter, it's a matter of, of me being rather curious and interested about technologically why, when the hydrogen was released, did it catch on fire? 
Nobody explains that. I don't know if you were born yet when Chernobyl happened. Did they teach you about that in school? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, there was a there was a reactor that went critical in the Ukraine in 1986. At first, people were not being forthright. The Soviet government did not disclose the sheer tragedy of what happened in Chernobyl in 1986. Millions of people were sickened with radiation. What we have here, sir, is Chernobyl on steroids. I feel very bad for you people in California in the direct crosshairs of the nuclear fallout which is coming your way. I, uh, I know here in the Philippines we are taking precautions. I have my iodine tablets and respirators and Geiger counters. I so long to get to the desert, though. I can tell you, sir, that it's a high desert out there. We did have a lot of bombs going off there in the old days. Okay, they wanted to bring nuclear waste in the Yucca Mountain right into my backyard. Huh. Well, I want to thank Art Bell for giving us a call and, and, and introducing us to talk radio here. Uh, but really, when the hydrogen is released, why does it explode? Let's have a few scientific, technological explanations about how these reactors work. Oh, the water's out, so they'll get hot and burn. Well... I'd like, I'd like, uh oh, there's some of my music material, my music mix material coming up under me. I think that's the end of the talk segment. the background and it gives it a smell that will put you in the mood to recreate some Ars of the Insane. It's the same kind of taste that you have on a, on a, on a painting. Just using my hair dryer on it here and you notice when you put the hair dryer on it the smell really becomes almost unbearable. Well, I have through television, and I'm just saying television is doing a very poor job of explaining this technically and scientifically. Very, very bad job. Terrible. Oh, that only stands to reason because they've long ago fired all of their science literate reporters. As a result, we have scientific illiteracy to deal with, and uh, when the feces hit the fan, we've got what we have before us now. Do you get any of those? Uh, do you get any of those Japanese channels? I. Awesome look at NHK English these days. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes, NHK. They're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, they, it's awful. They try to have a uh, electrical line put, it, put in. Have you noticed? And, uh, have you noticed? It doesn't sound that bad, by the way. I just have you noticed? Quick, uh, sound. The iPhone doesn't sound that bad. For have you noticed? Have you noticed that uh, NHK? It's, a, it's some guy talking in Japanese way down low, and there's some woman uh, translating it in English. And I've never heard anything more redundant. She will say the same thing about three or four times in a row. Just, the public just, can say an honest translation of the nuances of speaking. They're known for their reserved uh, language described in even the most catastrophic circumstances. Uh-oh, here's another call, suicide man. Hang on. Quite obviously, she's padding in conversation with her shadow. I have to ask how often you hear actual numbers. Actual numbers and 
intensity radiation. Where do you see reconstructions of the radioactive plume? Does NHK carry this? Can you? Yes, find they'll they'll tell you how many. Details? They'll tell you. They'll tell you how many micro sieverts are are registering here and there. Yes. Will they tell you what are the constituent? It's pretty bad. Last I heard, they actually abandoned the effort to put in an emergency power line because the radiation was too great for people to survive long in the area. Same with pumping water from the fire trucks on it. They can't stay there very long. What radio nuclides make up the plume? The suicide mission to get too close to that to fight the nuclear fire is a suicide mission. And it's a suicide mission to try to report this because it's bad for your career if you embarrass the Japanese authorities and make NHK look like they're babbling. Well, no, it's not like there's so much babbling, I think, is conveying the style of delivery. They're saying that the uh, war has not necessarily developed in the best interest of the Japanese Empire. And people who were meaning who had uh, radio steps were listening to this from ruined, burned-out cities. After all, we're all the way over the other side of the big Pacific Ocean. So why would we want to know numbers? And why would we want to know which radionuclides and which half-lives apply to us? Well, look at a it. Don't worry. The bad habits of your life will be much more of a risk factor. It is thus. Call now. Well, let's agree to be here again in a week. Probably turn the network better off. Separate life insurance through the closure of Henry. You know, that old the free thing was just a marketing thing. And it particularly helps when you when you're painting the eyes. Although with sculpture, I mean there is even more the case that, however, as it were fixed your position might be, it is occupying the same space as you. I mean it is a three-dimensional thing. It's well, paintings are three-dimensional too. Except you don't look much at the back of the painting. But when you take them down off the wall, you can walk around them. I mean, they have sides. I mean, they're not, paintings are not two-dimensional. A little bit of Alton Cowles. Uh -huh. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit of Alton Cowles. Uh -huh. Have this waft enough. Smell puts you right there in the attic or the dungeon or wherever you like to imagine the insane artist is painting and scraping. In fact, she won't sleep with me. He's peeing. You get the feeling. There. That's just right. Now let's take some more painted. Thank you. I'm going it. Oh, did you call it? That's the idea. It's about storytelling and it's about sharing. It's, it's, I really let it come from wherever it comes from and come out through me.
little bit about the cow. Uh -huh. Well, why what it's not getting used to be warm. I think he does. He would just say warm. Well, okay. we, now, we don't really see a lot of people um, sitting outside, so, you know, they're, they're not really... We just have lost our connection to Japan. Well, let's stop and remember, on the only charge in Dennis Flanagan, 22, Inverness, Florida, Kildee Rock, and the military family on the It's yeah. not that difficult. How about this color? Doesn't matter. And I'm using a brush here. You notice this brush has a number on it. it doesn't matter what number it is. Who cares? Unable to travel any further from the danger zone. Many get help from this house in special evacuation centers. As long as there's some number on it, it gets the job done. Put the brush here and you roll it and you go. Trying to listen to All Art Radio right here on KPFA in KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno. I'm haphazard. It's over the edge till 3 a.m. Keep trying. Yes, go ahead. You're on the air right now. Well, I couldn't understand a word he said, but then that's not the point, is it? These are what words are made of. Try to use them intelligently. The letters, I mean, not the words.
I couldn't care less. I could, no, I couldn't. I couldn't care less about Star Wars. I'm sorry. It's gone. It's over. I'm, I'm done with it. I don't care about Star Wars. There's a lot of different cows. I got some Shirley. That's the yellow one. Angus, they're black. Black, 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 black. And then the Hereford is red. A little bit.
never kill a cow in the olden days until November, December, because of they had no refrigeration. And the way they'd have to keep their meat was they'd hang it up on the side of the house where they had a great big nail. hang it out in the, in, the, in the middle of the night all night long and then they bring it in the daytime. They'd cover it with a quilt or something like that and then they'd take it back and forth and it'd stay cold all day in the house and it'd never spoil until they'd eat it up. They'd cut steaks and whatever they wanted from it off the, off the cow, you know, ribs or whatever they was having whatever day, you know, until it was eaten up. They'd live off the, what they raised in the summertime, like their gardens and that, and then they'd have pig meat, cattle meat for winter time. Then you had to raise what you lived on then. I'll give you an imitation to like my cows sound. when you take their calves away from them is on the count of they get a tight bag, you know, and they try to find their calves so they can relieve that pain. And for now, they'll ball for three days. They'll ball for three days. Just keep a balling until ball, 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 that ball. Uh, pain goes away, and that's the reason the cow balls when you take the calf away from her. <laughs> They'll ball because they, they're used to yet or something like that when you come around. And, or they, there's another cow over in another field that they ball back and ball back and forth, 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 back and
Irish eyes are smiling. Someone's black and blue with wilt of Irish laughter means the next one could be you. Well, they know one another because when I change them field to field, why they'll you turn them in with them and they'll bunt one another and chase one another around until they get acquainted. They act like you and I when we haven't seen somebody for a long time, you know. and I love it, but I'm not conscious of my own style, how I'm drawing, what method should I use. That's, that's like breathing to me. It's second nature. You shouldn't get in the way of that. That would be too contrived, you know? Simulacrum, not a real-life or cheap imitation. Coruscated distress condition or contradiction makes strange of brutal instances hiss and plague her weird sister genocide style is, is your sincerity style is what comes out of you at the moment bruised broken locked in hallucination Seven. A lot of young artists are trained in copying styles of major artists to learn. Nine. But how do you find your own style? How does that, does it just happen? And if 
you not just squeeze it between your legs, because we're sure to find a clever use for it later. which uh, feels to me like some sort of message from God that I'm doing something wrong. Uh, joining us now is a physicist named Dr. James Acton, uh, who joins us uh, in order to under help understand the uh, course of events. Take your time. My pleasure, right, sir. Um, engineers were able to connect an external grid power line cable uh, to Unit 2 today. Uh, Sky, I like Sky because it signals to you and to me we're outdoors with the insane artist that signals something that's above all the insane stuff. Excoriate their crime. Speak out. That's your voice. Yeah, that's your DNA. And beyond, menace for two. We're going to put on with this trowel here and some other color. But here's this one. It's your mistakes or your style. I look back at things I did when I was a kid and I would have thrown them out if it wasn't for Isabel saving them. And I couldn't bear to look at them because they were so bad. I could see, wow, this is really bad. These on self seas rise under literalization of death. Loathing itself, bloated on greed, more greed to slaughter, whatever gets in your way, land grab, more slaughter. They are three dimensions. But certainly the, the two-dimensionality of painting is part of the rhetoric of 20th century art, or the, the, the wordage that surrounds It's a pretty small part of the rhetoric, I mean, as far as I can see. Divide, nullify, murders. I mean, uh, um, you know, I don't see that, you know, it's hard to find uh, Kandinsky or Mondrian or any, you know, anyone in search of two dimensions. Slaughter and disempower of people. I mean, all painting strives to be real. Erase a culture. And you know, I think you can take it for granted that uh, by that they mean three dimensions. How much abuse, dirty the river, starve the mother, tighten the rope, consummate a dark plan. You definitely have the feeling of a connection to ancient art. And you also have a connection almost to some kind of pre-human life form. There appears to be a number of strands in your work. Um, that is the large video installations or sculptures, the family of robots, for instance, the video manipulations you actually carry out. Uh, testing, one, two, three. How's my voice? Testing, one, two, three. Uh, how's my modulation? Testing, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Is sounding okay? Am I clear? Uh, what? Yeah. How's my voice? Is it coming through clear? Am I? Is the modulation not clear? Uh, is it clear? Springing into existence through manipulating the technology. Raw and good. And live performance. And the first question is really whether there is a, a unifying attitude or philosophy to the diversity of, of what you do. The artist's son, Christopher Rothko, has a personal relationship to this work. Slow so by the edge of the sea is really the first painting I remember. It was hanging up the couch in the living room of the family brownstone in New York City. But it's also a very important piece in the family because my father painted it for my mother shortly after meeting her in 1944-45. Uh, it's subtitled Mel Ecstatic. My mother's nickname was Mel. And the painting shows two figures, presumably my father and my mother, at a surrealistically styled seaside. But they're twisted and distorted in the way that our mind does so in dreams and in the imagination. 
Slap it on. We're getting those crazy eyes here, you see. Yes, sir. Um, good question. Um, I think uh, I'm a sloppy guy, you know. As I dress sloppy and then... Uh, I kind of trace when I, we you know, we have been, all our advanced girls have been, we are by definition, we are internationalist and not racist in any sense, but of course, uh, we cannot deny the existence and research of DNA research and then memory of the uh, distant past. Put a hat on that scarecrow. A death's head, I like that, I'll make that a black gardenia, I think. Within this painting, there is a certain amount of mystery in all of Gorky's paintings. I mean, the donut, it's a radioactive donut. It was the DM. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Tastes different and it's way out. Ah, we go pee all over it. We won't do that on TV, but at home you just feel free to pee right all over it. As if it's a rebus or a code waiting to be deciphered. A chasm, no matter. I mean, before the invention of agriculture and private property, you know. And yet, you realize you don't actually have the tools to do so. And glee, all buried, all done. And before you know it, you've got something that'll look real nice. Dumped. Packed up with a bunch of pictures of old people at a yard sale or a rummage mall. Graded, loathing, mass graves. Bloody-handed serve fired from a hilltop. But now I look at it and I see the genius in that moment. There's history in it. If you start with curiosity, that takes you on an amazing journey. That's almost all you need. You just need to be curious about the world. And even though Ted is full of, you know, these very different voices that we've seen, and some people might initially think, how on earth can you have a conference that's on the one hand about science and technology, and on the other hand about art and global issues? Well, thanks for being with me. I'm Billy Flanagan. And I... And I could never be that person again, so I'm very thankful that I saved those. So that is about saving those. Next week on Art of the Insane. <laughs> And, and the answer is that everyone who comes. He claims that what we get the love of the atmosphere, the love sees it's coming out of my head. They're all different, but they share that curious spark. I 
I, I think they just initially come just to learn and just to, to um, you know, to, it's, it's a thrilling thing to hear a great architect explain their vision or to see some scientist, you know, really show you why it is that they've been passionate about this funny little creature for 30 years. It's, again, I was lucky to grow up in a time where there were no borders in, in art. Expression is expression, you know? I love the idea that I could be able to... That's the gift of being an artist. I think I can write a book, I can write a scenario, I can make a film, I could work with Isabel on a, on a collection, I could, I could do ceramic, I could blow glass. It's, that's a beautiful... I think that is what it is to be an artist, is you have license to create. <laughs> so designers are inspired by scientists, scientists are inspired by designers. <laughs> and myself and so it does. And hello again. I'm Billy Flanagan. The program is Art of the Insane. And then the Koreans came from most likely Siberian, you know, Central Arabian, you know, Steppe. In English, yeah, Steppe. Series regular 2399, far, uh, fast fart, fast start batteries. 103, the CCO FM, where in less than an hour, you're going to get to hear wonderful, sweet, innocent Pat O'Neill, who's happy again. He's got a grill back on, a grin that is back on his face. 
Beautiful uh, banks of the river of uh, no return. Uh, Halifax. Oh, yeah? That's about the weekend on the Halifax oh, River. Goodness, it's Daytona for you newcomers. Yeah, it's fun to beat your meat on the Halifax mud there. Yes. Beat your feet. Quite loose there. We have to be loose. Reads it, that's powerful. But when someone looks someone else in the eyes as a human, or, or look at an audience, goes in and, and is connecting, there, there are thousands of you know, subconscious things going on that we don't fully understand. And when someone gets it right, they are sending fireworks exploding the brains of everyone. Why was she laughing? To survive. And then... So I am um, uh, a rather loose artist. And way down, I'm looking way, way down the valley. And I can see a couple rooftops, and I'm going to put those in there for the scale. You don't want any glob. Action and movement, and um, so there's a lot of hard edges and a lot of soft edges. But I wanted to um, go ahead before I start painting and breaking the shapes up. I just wanted to show the viewers what I do, because as I start moving around on this, what's going to happen is that lead is going to start coming out. Never topple, mock, deride the temple, political decorum, mistrust the infidel, heathen, sadistic life goes nourished, psyche a shambles, grief crawls in a dungeon, twist inside victim's torment, incognito mask for slaughter, botched Sentry boats another subhuman direction. I lattice of wolf of garden of traffic survived a dawn. Pick up again a dirty war. Spit it out. What kind of life to live? Spit it up when life is cheap, fucked over, codified, mechanistic, arm, disarm, find a word. And I just want to scream, 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 and I just want to scream, 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 I just want to
at the beginning of a whole new era. The start of a brand new world. And now what? How do we start? How do we begin again? There are some things you can simply look up. Such as the size of Greenland, the dates of the famous 19th century rubber wars, Persian adjectives, the composition of snow, and other things you just have to guess at. And then again, today is the day, and those were the days, and now these are the days. And now the clock points histrionically to noon, some new kind of north. And so, which way do we go? What are days for? To wake us up. To put between the endless nights. Here's my theory of punctuation. Instead of a period at the end of each sentence, there should be a tiny clock that shows you how long it took you to write that sentence. And another way to look at time is this. There was an old married couple, and they had always hated each other, never been able to stand the sight of each other, really. And when they were in their 90s, they finally got divorced. And people said, Why did you wait so long? Why didn't you do this a whole lot earlier? And they said, Well, we wanted to wait until the children died. that will be America, a whole new place, just waiting to happen, broken up parking lots, rotten dumps, speedballs, accidents and hesitation, things left behind, styrofoam, computer chips. John. Oh, they were there. And Carol, too. Her hair pinned up in that weird beehive way she loved so much. And Craig and Phil moving at the pace of summer. And Uncle Al, who screamed all night in the attic. Yes, something happened to him in the war, they said, over in France. And France had become something we never mentioned. Something dangerous. Yes, some were sad to see those days disappear. The flea markets and their smells. The war. All the old belongings strewn out on the sidewalks. Clothes and old resentments and ragged record jackets. Ah, these days. All oh, these days. What are days for? To wake us up. To put between the endless night. are bouncing and accounts are being automatically closed. Passwords are expiring. And everyone's counting and comparing and predicting. Will it be the best of times? Will it be the worst of times? 
Or will it just be another one of those times? Show of hands, please. world, which like Kierkegaard said, can only be understood when lived backwards, which would entail an incredible amount of planning and confusion. And then there are those big questions always at the back of your mind, things like, are those two people over there actually my real parents? Should I get a second Prius? And you, you who can be silent in four languages. Your silence will be considered your consent. for the audience, and what the audience wanted, and what the audience said it wanted. And you know the reason I really love the stars? Is that we cannot hurt them. We can't burn them, or melt them, or make them overflow. We can't flood them, or blow them up, or turn them out. But we are reaching for them. We are reaching for them. Some say our empire is passing. As all empires do. And others haven't a clue what time it is or where it goes or even where the clock is. And oh, the majesty of trees. An unstoppable train. Different colored wonderland. of speech and sex with strangers. Dear old God, may I call you old? And may I ask, who are these people? little thugs dressed in calico kilts and jaunty hats and their perpetual white toothy smiles and oh my brothers and oh my sisters I'm so what are days young. days are where we live the flow and then the flow they come, they fade, they go, and they go. No way to know exactly when they start or when their time is up. Now I'm tolling for the hour. Oh, another day. Another dime. Another day in America. Another day. Another dollar. Now and so in for the home. Another day. Now for in America. Oh no. And all my brothers. And all my long lost sisters. How do we 
Foundation brings you all art radio. I want to go. <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on this morning, Clark? We are looking at the, the law. <laughs> <laughs> Squad car in the parking lot. <laughs> Pay no attention to me. Nobody oh, heard it. Nobody heard no, no. It's fine. We are... Uh... <laughs> all right. I'm calm. <laughs> Don't think you're going to break me up. No, sir. Uh, just in case you're just tuning in. And... <laughs> and then, um, so uh, I kind of react to the situation, I think, you know, I mean, almost opportunistic, and nobody uh, implied I was opportunistic. Explain, dashed in semantics, only place is to live inside a there is torment. Yeah, but uh, there's a fine line between opportunism and, uh, you know, uh, freedom. Do you know anything about the super mobile people that have on Saturday and the uh, purple car smoke and earthquake? Maybe uh, on Saturday? Do you know anything about that? Come on. I only I only know about cell phones. Yours is bad. They're all bad. I can hardly understand you. You sound like you're coming out of a little tiny tube. And and, I, and once again I reiterate, not for broadcast. Yeah. Cell phones. Not for broadcast. All response, Tinny. It is I, Calcula. I did. It was very fun. I'm trying to tonight. No, no, no. Well, I uh, you know. Say, generalistic in certain sense. That you don't put out light, but you reflect them. Forlorn, knee jerk, liberal recoils in hounded night sound, horror battered, limb torn from limb. How won't any speak? Anybody do it, but uh, anyway, so um, chance is that I was doing electronic music and I was very untalented for electronic music. And then, uh, so I kind of went to the, uh, I took emergency exit to so-called so performance art. It's our surrealism. And it's time once again for us to settle down together and Move on with your quest. It's your quest to turn out expensive and valuable art canvases at home in a half an hour or so. 
And you, you, as long as you follow your own, then, there should be no, no, no doorway, no border. Uh, we never had a plan. We never, I never thought I'm going to be an artist and Isabel's going to be a fashion designer. Just, we kind of evolved. It, we found it, it found us. We certainly had a talent or a uh, love of doing something, an ability. Scream or whimper, act, say, stop! Canvases that have the real look and feel of the kind of collectible art of the insane that usually has clowns in it. Action music at the right set. Then from there, I sense the limit of is also in our performance, action, body art, whatever you call it. And we respected that, I think, and, and we let it go where it may. Uh, and flux. One looks at them straight on as you address a painting. Are you well, interested? You can look at them from the side too. I don't think it matters where you look at them, but I mean, they do have a fairly distinct uh, frontal point of view, and uh, from that point of view, you, they look like pictures. I mean, and. Uh, for example, you're not looking at them in the same way that you might look at sculpture. Although, I think that most people look at sculpture in a pictorial way anyway. I mean, everyone picks a view, or whatever the view might be, the criteria that you use uh, are really pictorial rather than sculptural. I mean, I don't think that uh, there is a unique sculptural way of looking. There are sculptural descriptions. You might say that you're interested in a tactile quality of, uh, of the material or something like that, but the way you judge a sculpture from each individual point of view, even though you might uh, make a route and take, a, you know, use a 360 degree point of view, it's made up of individuals' point of views. And each stationary point of view that you select, uh, I think that you have a tendency to look at the sculpture in a, in a very pictorial way. It's what you don't plan that's brilliant.
sort of balance, the kind of aesthetic and visual take that you have on a piece of sculpture is the same kind of take that you have on a, on a, on a painting. to behold. It's, I, I think we are somehow tapping back into this primal thing that, that humans did. But they gathered round a campfire. And they told stories to each other. setting that was a very theatrical setting it was a very dramatic setting you know it, it wasn't you know a, a bored man in a suit behind a lectern mumbling for 45 minutes which is kind of what a lot of the spoken word became although uh, with sculpture I mean there is even more the case that however as it were, fixed your position might be, it is occupying the same space as you. I mean, it is a three-dimensional thing. It's... Well, paintings are three-dimensional too, except you don't look much at the back of the paintings, but when you take them down off the wall, you can walk around them. I mean, they have sides. I mean, they're not, paintings are not two-dimensional. And you have to give in and just accept the alternative universe that Gorky presents to you. something there that I might want to repeat. And so, um, I think we're tapping back into that ancient campfire experience. And in many ways, what, what we see are, you know, one of our current missions is to try to figure out what the reinvention of the spoken word looks like. Although I have pretty much made my reputation on not falling for the clown gamut, because I see it as a cheap trick and one suitable only for aging actresses or lounge singers or others who need desperately to get on TV. TV? What's that? Well, this is radio. All art radio. Right here on KPFA and KPFV in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, KPFA.org online. It's over the edge. All our radio. Oh, 
they have figured out the way to connect with other people. Okay, you um, made a point earlier about the media not explaining what's going on in the nuclear power plant in Japan. So I went and looked it up on your friend, the Internet. And basically, the core of what's going on is there was an explosion that knocked out the cooling system to the main reactor. This was um, made worse by the emergency cooling system being down. And now they don't have any water going to the reactors. And that's the core of the problem. So does that help? Yeah, but they don't really explain how a nuclear reactor works to the extent that you sort of understand these details that they bring up. No, no, they, they're not going to go through all that. That would take, and that's too long to go into in a little forum like this. Ah, it could be I done. Just, could be done. I just thought that I would bring up that little bit of information for, for those who didn't quite understand. what that. That's basically what's going on. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, I understand. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. As a poetic universe parallel to our own. With paintings that are not authentically insane, they're just cute or affecting. They are three dimensional. But certainly the, the two dimensionality of painting is part of the rhetoric of 20th century. Art critic and historian Dory Ashton was an early champion of the abstract expressionists. She didn't know Gorky personally, but was struck by his open reverence for earlier painters. Oh, it's all the, the, the wordage that surrounds it's a pretty Even at a time when he and his peers were overturning what had come before them. A small part of the rhetoric, I mean, as far as I can see. Oh, enough! The unconscionable act. Headlines, writ in blood. Muslim, child, raped and dying in... When they say a pool of blood, a small thing, a very small thing, ruthlessly shot down, degraded body beyond recognition, what takes to life your love? A child? Silence. about the super moon we're supposed to be having on, on Saturday? Yeah, so did me and Trudy. The super moon is supposed to, the super moon is supposed to cause like an earthquake or something like that on Saturday. Is that true? Hello, I'm good. Do you, do you know anything about that? Come on, somebody's got to... Oh, well. I'm out of here. I don't know anything about that, but it's not true. I, I heard, I heard it, it might come true. 
Way the end of nature, we say, glibly, dead of tongue, of harangue, humanity in chains, subjugated, bent to obfuscate, well-meaning crunch of any other tribe, death squadrons, annihilate the senses. What mouth-to-mouth resuscitates the ghost of night? What are we living for? What Demon speaks in me to say, I want us all to die.
TV commercial for hiking shoes shot in Kenya using Samburu tribesmen. Camera closes in on tribesmen who speaks his native language, Ma. As he speaks, the slogan, Just Do It, appears on the screen. Lee Kronk, anthropologist at the U of Cincinnati, says the man is really saying, I don't want these. Give me big shoes. Says Nike's Elizabeth Dolan, we thought nobody in America would know what he said. <laughs> Give me big shoes. In Western shoes, to die and go out in an easy religion, as useful as dead rat in refrigerator. <laughs> like a crying... Well, don't get me started. They all look like they have knives, you know? Well, today we're going to discuss subject matter because that's where the real insanity factor can come into play. Even if you can't paint a lick or even if you lick your paints. And if you do lick your paints, don't do it to the cinnabar, the red. That stuff will take your tongue and nail it to Taiwan on a stick if you get my drift. So what shall I paint, you says to yourself, rolling your eyes to the ceiling. Grab the moment. See, there's an insane metaphor I just came up with, and what am I going to do? This isn't poetry, and it isn't prose. It's pretty close to criticism. And when he was reproached for that, he answered, when I'm with Picasso, I'm with Picasso. He was with them rather than trying to forge what the Americans often think of as an uh, individualist stance. So there are some of these one-liners. Do you believe I'm your wish? Or your... Those who are allergic to the sea, those who have resisted depravity, men who shave off beards and stages, pausing to take photographs. Those who, while visiting a foreign country, have lost the end of a Q-tip in their ear and have been unable to explain their problem. <laughs> Gentlemen who have placed a microphone beside a naked woman's stomach after lunch and later after slowing down the sound considerably have sold these noises on the open market as whale songs. <laughs> All poets and actors who spit into the first row when they perform. Any person who's had the following dream, you are in a subway station 
At the far end, you see a coffee machine. You put in two coins, the holy grail drops down. <laughs> then blood pours into the chalice. Any person who has lost a urine sample in the mail. Anyone who has had to step into the elevator with all of the Irish rovers. Those who have accidentally stapled themselves. Anyone who has been penetrated by a Mountie. Any university professor who has danced with a life-size cardboard cutout of Jean Genet. Those who have accidentally locked themselves within a sleeping bag at a camping goods store. Men who have never touched a whippet. Women who give up the, 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 women who give up the accordion because of pinched breasts. Those who have woken to find the wet footprints of a peacock on their kitchen floor. Literary critics who have swum the Hellespont. Any lover who has gone into a flower shop on Valentine's Day and asked for clitoris when he meant clematis. Anyone who has testified as a character witness for a dog in a court of law. Any person who has burst into tears at the liquor control board. Anyone with pain. Even when he was very poor, he had the most expensive paints and, and lots of them. And he discovered what's called the liner brush, which sign painters use. And he was thrilled with that. And you can see his pleasure in the painterly line. I mean, uh, um, you know, I don't see that... You know, it's hard to find uh, Kandinsky or Mondrian or any, you know, anyone in search of two dimensions. I would like to show you a new development. First, have a drink. It's so hot inside this fancy computer. Oh my god, I'm just going to. We should possibly have down. Good. Are you still there? strives to be real, and I think you can take it for granted that uh, by that they mean three dimensions. There appears to be a number of strands in your work. Um, that is the large video installations or sculptures, the family of robot, for instance, I 
thing that, that keeps recurring when I think about the pieces I see here and your work in general, and I think it would be useful to just start off by a comment you made about your work, which was that, and I quote, I don't wish to make sculpture about form. It doesn't really interest me. I wish to make sculpture about belief or about passion or about experience. And I think a much broader approach needs to be adopted in understanding and perhaps perceiving what you do. I think that's probably true. I think um, over the last 10 years or so, um, there's been a tendency to see the work in terms of um, my background. And I feel that's been a shame. That's really not allowed me to give what I feel might be possible or to deposit what I feel might be possible. But it's also restricted other people's experience of the work. And seems to have a little thing called the most unforgettable character I've met. Barney Newman is my most unforgettable character. He was one remarkable human being. Rolling your eyes to the ceiling. I'm going to turn it into a high-priced collectible tramp art of the insane. I love the man deeply. Pollock introduced me, and he said, here's somebody's work you should see. And I looked and I got out as fast as I could mm. and I'm walking down the street I said to my wife the emperor's clothes mm. nothing there I couldn't see a thing I said collectible I suppose I mean collectible but it troubled me Jackson thought it was good so I went back by the third visit I thought he was a great painter I think that's um but that's a battle that's being fought and will continue to be fought, I think. I mean, some, some people have, have said that the notion of the spiritual almost in relation to the vocabulary that's, that's used to discuss your work is, is a welcome addition to the vocabulary of art criticism of recent contemporary work. If for a long time now, it's been a taboo subject. It's been something that one has not been able to properly deal with. And yet, it is a fundamental of the human condition, and we must somehow deal with it. It's a, it's a treacherous path, I think, in between meaningless 60s talk and real things. Sounds sort of like testicle, doesn't it? The modern bought five paintings of mine. The acquisitions committee would not buy Witterokas, so I gave it to them. And Barney was furious with me. He could have sold it. He had to buy it. I said, that wasn't the point. I said, it belongs there. and therefore that must be dealt with on some level. Well, I've got my canvas. We showed you last week how to pee on it. And here it's a pretend week later, although it's only a TV half hour, which you can tell by the awful smell still here in the studio if you were here, which of course you aren't. And lucky for you too. And yet it appears to have been denied. Okay, first... I'm going to do the eyes because the ceiling, see, will be orange, and I like to get the orange stirred up good. Let's just stir it up with an anvil, I think it is. Luther, would you stir it up there? Your eyes are round. 
I'm using a color, doesn't matter which, they're pretty much all the same. I think artists have dealt with it. I'm not so sure that that those that write about art have been able to deal with it. Um, it requires, I think, on some levels, a great deal of intelligence and, and a humility, or whatever that is. Mm. I think that having read a lot about your works in preparing for this, I, I just wonder, I just have an instinctive feeling that something quite fundamental is being missed. Very often, and um, perhaps um, some Western literary tradition to explain isn't isn't a very adequate way of discussing what you do. Because at the end of the day, the work is here; it has its presence. And that the words have their presence, but the two don't seem to me to correspond. I think we're talking about experience. I don't think it's enough to talk about this spiritual or such things and um, leave them as ideas. <laughs> Typically, in the 50s, the canvases were propped up on blocks near the floor, and he would be up on ladders. Sometimes he would actually turn the painting upside down so as to be able to paint the, the top section more easily. And uh, put in these dots in the eyes, whatever they're called, eyeballs or something like that. Which, of course, makes us all crazy when we try to figure out which way is up. Then we go back across the studio here and hurl the orange from over here. And the dirt marks are going both directions. You would actually have pulley systems to raise and lower the paintings to help him not just paint it, but also to try and get a sense of, of heights and proportions about where something would go in the room, how it would work on the wall. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyway, I'm out of here. And uh, I'm going to be making a mess. Pretty much like uh, one more sport here. Here we go. Looks just like Taiwan to me. Now, those smudges could be palm trees, they might be ducks, but that's the kind of insane ambiguity we want. I'll do the stick with this color. You remember I said, mail it to Taiwan on a stick. This is the stick part. It's a wonderful color, that one. I don't know what it's called. I suppose it has a name. Who cares, really? Painting in the sticks a little harder. I'm going to use my palette. Oh, you caught me there, didn't you? You think I meant my palette knife and that I'd made a mistake, and that's where you'd be as wrong as a doorknob on a donut. Later in 
his career, he did have some assistance, but they would help him make some paints. They would help him stretch some canvases, but then they would leave. He always painted by himself. Other abstract art is simply its rejection of uh, of uh, sort of geomet geometric patterning. That it uh, that it looks for a kind of freer form than geometry gets to it. To say what it is is to limit it, leaving it open for almost everything else. The paint that Reinhardt used was very, very matte or dry because Reinhardt wanted to strip back the medium of paint to being less of a mixture and more of this just raw pigment that would give his paintings this unique quality of revealing themselves slowly. Ab Reinhardt presents a funny contradiction because, in fact, he is one of the most articulate of the abstract expressionists. He wrote a great deal. On the other hand, when it came to the art, he believed in total silence. It didn't need that crutch of verbal language or explanation. I'm going to take my entire palette with the thumb, see, that goes right through the little hole for the thumb, and I put it right here, and I start swirling it around and then I sit on it and I swirl my elegant buttocks around and I take a look, I stand back, not too far back or I'd be off camera, that wouldn't be much of a TV show, would it? Well, there you go. Looks just as surreal as if Tristan Zara himself had swirled his butt on it. The artist, reading from his essay, Art as Art Dogma, in 1965. The one standard in art is oneness and fineness, rightness and purity, abstractness and evanescence. The one thing to say about the best art is the breathlessness, lifelessness, deathlessness, contentlessness, formlessness, spacelessness, and timelessness. This is always the end of art. some collector who himself is insane to be collecting the art of the insane. Robert well, Lula, speaking in I'm about to run out of music, so we'll see you next week. I suppose most of us felt that our passionate allegiance was not to American art, but that there was such a thing as modern art. One has to somehow um, have them have this whole thing be experiential. And we'll discuss the kind of expensive and collectible folk art made of bottles and slag that you can turn into a drive-in chapel or grotto and sell postcards and live like a prince in a small air trailer on the grounds. Billy Flanagan, Art of the <laughs> Just intellectual. Um, I would uh, um, follow to a 
certain extent anyway, voices um, kind of notion about the spiritual that um, intuitive intelligence is the highest kind of intelligence. your radio is doing funny things it's not really it's me with the hiccups <laughs> just like that one. <laughs> you're tuned to all art radio And in the end, um, in t- 
intuitive sense is all that one has to go with. On as an artist. Much of what's happening in this moment in New York is this quest to develop a language, a vocabulary that really belongs solely to these artists. Herbert Ferber's sculpture called Jackson Pollock is a portrait of his fellow artist, and he didn't aim to capture Pollock's facial or bodily features, but rather his movement, in particular the gestures he made while painting. Here's Ferber speaking in 1968. Abstract, I suppose, should be a term applied only to uh, things which have uh, no reference to um, human, plan, animal, and such forms. And now, perhaps the work is more abstract in that it is not referable to plant or animal forms, but which still is largely a sculpture of gesture. the words absurd or anti-art or nonsense. But I think what it misses is how much Dada was a profound ethical response to historical circumstances. Anne Omlin is a curator of painting and sculpture at the Museum of Modern Art. Dada can be seen as fundamentally reacting to the devastation of World War I in an even more profound way, the Dadaists are grappling with the seismic shifts in the modern world. Many people do not know that Chernobyl was not Soviet Union bombs. It was CIA. They did that to Chernobyl on purpose. They want to make a look at They want to sabotage them. They want to poison Ukraine. Korean Union. It's true. Now, you cannot blame Soviet Union. CIA did it. Everybody knows that. KPP, I was gonna give me something stupid. Switching to the landline. Hello? Tell the door time. The Zorgon, in connection with NBC and the 12 galaxies, for the determination of the cosmos. Other momentous things are going on. Those, those Libyans, those freedom fighters, they're just about to be massacred, but it looks like they have hope now. And uh, there might be some interesting fireworks in that region in very, 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 very soon. I was afraid that Obama was gonna gonna be like Stalin, holding his forces yeah. away from Warsaw while the Nazis killed all the, the patriots fighting for their freedom there, waiting until they were all killed off before uh, he ended up taking that region. Much easier for the post-war government yeah. to set up, of course. Anyway, looks like we get to look like good guys again for a while. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, we're we're not gonna be chicken this time. I worry though, Gaddafi might be able to wreak a little mischief. People for far too long have believed in the fake moon. It's not real. Who has been bitten 105 times? William Host of Miami, Florida. He doesn't milk those snakes, no sir. He lets them bite voluntarily.
into a latex covering over the mouth of a glass mask. <laughs> and their culture at large. Dada emerged simultaneously in Zurich and New York, two cities that provided neutral havens at the onset of the war. You can enter the exhibition in two ways, a choice reflecting Dada's dual points of origin. Enter on the left to begin in New York. Go right to begin in Zurich. Dadaism has launched an attack on fine arts. Dada it has declared it is not to be a mandating opening of the ballots. Dadaism has reduced positive art dealers and negative to micro nonsense. Residence permits in order to achieve or Dada in all Dada before Dada is there. Dada, Dada, Dada. Dadaism has launched an attack on the fine arts. Hi, Ralph. Hi, this is Dick Clark. Hoping you had your sound. You damn must be pulled apart. Mm -hmm. You're on a roll now, right? Keep your hands off the buttons so they don't interrupt the flow. And yet, another report from. Our uh, society editor here seems that uh, the upcoming marriage we reported a few weeks back between Belinda Carlisle of the Go-Go's and Bill Bateman of the Blasters has, uh, well, sort of been put on the back burner for the time being. <laughs> 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 and White Christmas made it to the charts by two different artists in modern times. Modern times, modern times, modern times. I'm losing my mind! Lean back and relax. Get up and dance. It's Dick Clark's Rock Roll and Remember on one of the... Lean back and relax or get up and dance at Dick... Uh... Lean back and relax or get up and dance. It's Dick Clark's Rock Roll and Remember on W1. Uh, lean back and relax or get up and dance. It's Dick's. Uh, lean back and relax. <laughs> hey, that's a good sounding thing. And then a good record from a great performer, Carla Bonhoff Bonhoff. Hey, that's a good record. And it from a great performer, Carla Bon. Blah, blah, blah. Not a screw left in its customary place. The screw holes wrenched out of shape. The total negation of everything that had existed before. Dada will get you if you don't watch out. It is on the way here. With subhead, Paris has capitulated to new literary movement. London laughs but will probably be next victim. <laughs>
swirl at the edge of the sea expresses a lot of the conviction that Rothko shared with his fellow abstract expressionists. The Filthy Rich Foundation brings you all art radio by, for, and about contemporary artists 24 hours a day. Um, as, as an artist of my kind, anyway. You're listening to Resonance FM 1069, London, England. made the system up as like a as like a an art piece like a, the, 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 me making it up was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna do this with tapes i'm gonna do tape collage uh yeah you know yeah i started playing with this uh this band called doofus okay in uh in in purchase uh and they, they were actually the first person it's, uh, it's really uh they were the first people to like actually be like you know it's a weird enough collection of people that a non-traditional enough band that they were that, that someone was like i would like to oh and then i, I started playing with this band uh, the golden calves Okay. Doing like a uh, noise stuff and like some collage stuff, you know. And so like I wasn't really I wasn't a musician at all, but I, since I was kind of around, I lived with musicians, and I'm doing this like collage stuff and like kind of spoken word stuff and like bits and pieces of you know sonic detritus and stuff. At that time, which is that they were inventing the new art. No, I have do you have a minute? So, our voices sound pretty good. No. I you asked me a question about art. Are you stuck? Huh? Guess what? I can give you a mic. You can make them sound even better. No, 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 no. I can make you much better. I'll give you a hundred What? You, you want to paint a better picture? You didn't know that a computer could be happy. Paint a sculpture. I don't paint a picture. Sculpt a picture. Sculpt a picture. Sculpt it. Sculpt it. Sculpt it. Yeah. You can take a picture of the sculpture that you drew. <laughs> Why not? But you can keep your foot at the bottom and be honest. <laughs> I can let it go for it. But sometimes we get depressed too. Therefore, I think the imagery that they chose was oftentimes connected to birth or fertility or generation. You definitely have the feeling of a connection to ancient art. And you also have a connection almost to some kind of pre-human life form springing into existence. Uh, sooner or later, it was someone's like, hey, you want to jam on this one song? Oh, we're going to play this show at this dumb place. Do you want to come with us and touch that broken radio if you want? So I started kind of getting in and playing with that. The artist's son, Christopher Rothko, has a personal relationship to this work. The slow so by the edge of the sea is really the first painting I remember. It was hanging over the couch in the living room of the family brownstone in New York City. But it's also a very important piece in the family because my father painted it for my mother shortly after meeting her in uh, 1944-45. It's subtitled Mel Aesthetic. My mother's nickname was Mel, and the painting shows two figures, presumably my father and my mother, at a surrealistically styled seaside, but they're twisted and distorted in the way that our mind does so in dreams and in the imagination. Hey, how'd you like the ID for our friends across the water? Happy. Uh, 
I got it right, didn't I? <laughs> Anyway, I did it on a cell phone. That's what I wanted to point out. Hi. Let me introduce myself. I'm Kate, and I can say anything you want me to say. Six months ago, our work of any art was in many different areas of the various arts, but primarily for no longer performing. Ladies and gentlemen, here now, in the midst of the so called cultural explosion, we are all aware of the excitement of this media, which results in the vast array of culture centers leaping all over the country, a phenomenon in contemporary American society. That's about it for All Art Radio. What else can we do? This is Over the Edge, All Art Radio. We'll be back next week. Stay tuned right now for the Puzzling Evidence Show at 3 a.m. This is KPFA, KPFB in Berkeley, KFC up in Fresno. KPFA.org online. Please visit us there. We need your money. Now, don't be put off. We just need a little money. This is listener-supported radio. No commercials. Have you noticed? Well, if you like it, support it. KPFA.org online.